All right, we're back again. Here are some more math informational videos for you. Today's math is all about adding like fractions. Now, what's nice about it is because they're like fractions, it means that they share the same denominator, so you don't have to be changing things around like we had to before. It's really pretty straightforward. We're also gonna be working with improper fractions and mixed numbers, so a little bit of review from some of what we did last week. So the first thing we're gonna look at is the first example. It says the length across the bell or top of a mushroom jellyfish is about five-sixths of a foot. If two mushroom jellyfish were placed side by side, what would be their combined length? Well, when you see the word combine, it means you're gonna add, and they've actually drawn little pictures here for you of the two jellyfish side by side, and you are adding five-sixths plus five-sixths, because each one of these is across the top of that bell of the jellyfish. Now they give you a couple of different ways to solve this problem. The first way is to use unit fraction tiles. We could set up a fraction bar. We know that we're gonna have two of them, actually. They put them all in the same one, and that's fine. Um, if we're talking about sixths, that means basically we have, I'm gonna show you this a little differently than the book does, just because I want to. So if you were gonna show each one of these fractions, you would have sixths, which means they're split up into six pieces. This could be the first one. And if we're going to do the second one right over here, another five sixths, I need another fraction bar to work with. Again, that's divided into six pieces. And there you go. So we are taking these two and we are adding them together. We're gonna to do that by making one gigantic fraction bar. Let's go back up here and let's make sure we show these fractions. So five sixths would mean that five of these pieces are colored in. Now, if I'm going to take those and combine them, these are still gonna be in measurements of sixths, but we need enough for these two. So if our whole is gonna be these plus these, I need lots of space. So one, two, three, four, five. I need five for the first one. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We need at least that many for the second one. So how many sixths do we have? I'm gonna show you with those unit fractions. There's the first one. Here is the second one. I'll switch colors so you can kind of see that. How many total sixths do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have ten sixths. That's one way to add them together. Another way is just to do it the way that they're set up. If you have a fraction that already has a common denominator, you're adding sixths. I don't want you to get in the habit of trying to add those two numbers together. That's not what we're doing. We're measuring in sixths, so our denominator has to stay in sixths. How many total sixths do we have? Five plus five is 10. So those are two different ways that you can add those like fractions together. Now, unfortunately, when we do this, we're left with an improper fraction. I want you to think back. How do we take this improper fraction and turn it into a mixed number? Well, this is basically like saying 10 divided by six. So if I do that, how many times will six fit into 10? One time. Six times one is six. You subtract. Now, when you're working with the fraction, instead of just putting a remainder four up here at the top, we're actually gonna write the remainder as a fraction. The remainder is the numerator. The divisor is the denominator. So 10 sixths, as a mixed number is one and four sixths, okay? So that's gonna be your answer for right over here in these boxes when they say five sixths plus five sixths. This is what you want, one and four sixths. And it's also what you want down here at the bottom. I wanna practice a couple more numbers like this. We haven't done this quite a lot, so I just wanna make sure I review. So say you have another fraction like 12 fifths. This is like saying 12 divided by five. So here it is. How many fives fit into 12? Two. Five times two is 10. We're gonna take our remi remainder over our divisor. So 12 fits as a mixed number is two and two fits. On to the back of that page. All right, we have a table here. I'm gonna go ahead and clear this off so we have some room to work. 
in your table, you have days and how much was read. So we're going to refer to this table on and on. It says, on Tuesday, Teddy read how much of the book? Well, all you're doing there is taking a look at the chart. It tells you four tenths. On Thursday, he read two tenths. If they want to know how much he read altogether, we're going to be doing four tenths plus two tenths. So you're going to be filling those numbers in as you go. They really make this easy for you. So four tenths, all right, plus two tenths. So let's go ahead and do that. Four tenths plus two tenths. Again, the denominator stays the same because we're measuring in tenths. How many tenths do we have? Four plus two is six. One of the things this page does that we need to practice is being able to simplify a fraction. That means we want to make it into the smallest fraction possible. So we're not finished when we have this answer right here. That 6 tenths is going to go right there on your paper, but we need to simplify it. We need to write it in simplest form. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that 6 tenths and see what can we do to make it smaller. Well, in math, you only have two choices for making a number smaller, either subtraction or division. And we know working with making equivalent fractions, we use multiplication. This time we're going to use the opposite. We're going to use division. So we need to ask ourselves, what number could we divide both the numerator and denominator by to make them smaller? What's a factor that they have in common? Well, I know right away they're both even numbers, so I know I can divide by 2. Let's try it and see what we get. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 6 divided by 2 is 3. Now this is the simplified fraction. We can't go any smaller because those are prime numbers. So right here on your paper, where it has the 5 already written in the denominator, you're going to put that 3 fifths right there. This is the same number, it's just simplified, okay? Down there at the bottom, we have some more fractions you're adding together. Pretty straightforward, if you're just adding fractions that have the same denominator, start off by just adding them together. So if I have 1 7 plus 3 7, remember that denominator stays the same. 1 plus 3 is 4. I can't make this any more simple because we already have a prime number here. So that one's already taken care of. Uh, what if we do number 2 down here, which is 1 4 plus 1 4? Well, again, keep that denominator the same. Then you can just add the numerators. 1 plus 1 is 2. Now this one can be simplified. Again, we know that these numbers are both even numbers, which means I can divide by 2. I want to take it down as small as I can. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. There is your simplified fraction. All right? Your next page does very much the same thing. If you end up with a fraction, I want you to try and make sure you can't simplify it. Get it down to those lowest terms as you can, okay? Let's see. Let's go to the back of this page here and see if there's anything on the back you might need help with. These are basically story problems based on the same concepts we've been doing, being able to add together fractions. So I don't think those are going to be too tough. Let's try number 17. Sometimes those brain builders throw you guys off a little bit. So let's give it a try. So number 17 says... It rained two-eighths of an inch in one hour. It rained three-eighths of an inch each hour for the next two hours. Find the total amount of rain. All right, so the first hour, it rained two-eighths of an inch. For the next two hours, it rained three-eighths of an inch. So that means it did it right there, and then it did it again. If I want to know how much rain altogether, all together means we're going to be adding these. And it's great because they're already in the same denominator. So we know we're just going to keep that denominator and we're just going to add the numerators. 2 plus 3 is 5. 5 plus 3 is 8. Well, we don't want to leave it like that, right? Because we can do 8 divided by 8. When you do that, you get 1. Anytime you have a fraction that has the same numerator and denominator, you know that you have made one whole. So it rained for one hour. I can abbreviate that right there for you. All right, let's take a look at number 18. Select two fractions whose sum is 3 fourths. 
Okay, if we hear the word sum, we know we're going to be adding them together, right? So this fraction plus this fraction is 3 fourths. But the denominators are the same, but they don't want us to do them in fourths. This could be kind of tricky. Well, let's see, because right away I would want to just put in like maybe one fourth and two fourths and get three fourths. That means that we're going to have to be simplifying to get this answer. So my brain's already thinking, I need to find something that has a larger denominator than this that would reduce. So I want to change this into a bigger number. So let's use what we know about equivalent fractions. Let's turn it into eights, because that would make a different denominator over here. So what do I do to four to make it into eight? Multiply by two. I want to do the same thing at the top. So we can say three fourths is the same thing as six eighths. Let's use this over here. So how can I make six eighths? Well, how about two eighths plus four eighths? We know that six eighths, which is what we have right here, is the same as three fourths because they're an equivalent fraction. All right, I think you should be just great with this. If you need additional help, please let me know. mvaw123 at gmail.com. Thanks, guys.